My name is Jake Boss. I can't run around with the fucking Hi, I'm Katie Hess, sales and marketing here at Liquor Grow. You can tell we're dressed a little festive today. It is the holiday season. And as most people are out Christmas shopping, we know our farmers are crop input shopping. So. Did you say Christmas shopping? I did, Jake. I said Christmas shopping. I haven't even started yet. In fact, my wife reminded me of that this morning. Um, Jake, you do know what they say. They say that the closer you get to Christmas, the bigger the gifts are for the family because you know, it's grab something on the shelf and go. Don't if worry about it. that's the case, I got to go right now. Right, right <laughs> now. We can't finish this video. Well, let's be really fast today and keep it short so our folks at home can also continue with their crop input shopping. Um, Jake, we talk a lot about the systems approach for corn and what are the important things, you know, early planting, good soil condition, the right nutrients. But oftentimes we don't talk about those micronutrients. So today, can we just spend a few seconds talking about micronutrients on corn and soybeans, and if you like them soil applied or foliar applied. Okay, so in brief, uh, in my experience here at Liquor Grow, the most most effective way, number one, it's zinc and boron for corn and manganese for soybean, okay? Prior to me, uh, there was a lot of testing that was done here of all the other micronutrients like molybdenum and copper and more that we looked at in research plots and didn't find to consistently increase yields, okay? But zinc is important, and if you've watched any other videos, you know that zinc and ATS need to be applied together. ATS is our sulfur source, ammoniated zinc is our zinc source. Those two nutrients when applied together in suspension fertilizer in the fall, suspension fertilizer in the spring, or planter applied, the zinc becomes extremely effective and consistent at increasing yields. Okay, so zinc on corn. Absolutely. Manganese on soybean, again, can be applied with the suspension fertilizer in the fall, the spring. Um, now, all the other micronutrients, like I've already alluded to, we haven't seen consistent yield increases from those, okay? And oftentimes, you know, there's these foliar micronutrient packages that have molybdenum, copper, cobalt. Manganese. Manganese. Um, Boron. Boron, all the micronutrients in, in one package that you might fully apply at B5 or at BT in corn or at R3 in soybean. I've tested those quite a bit at the university level when I was there. I've tested those a reasonably a reasonable amount when, uh, here. Do you see consistently more yield bumps from those packages? I don't see consistent yield bumps from those packages in either of my university experiences or here. And micronutrients is a is a conversation that's deep and it can take some time but when you walk into the door and you want to know well what micronutrients should I use you know it's not that simple because number one the soil test to to tell you if you need micronutrients or not aren't that good okay so in other words you want to know if you need molybdenum well go out and take a soil test for, for molybdenum you can do that but even if the soil test level says you're high, that doesn't mean you don't need molybdenum. And even if the soil tests are low, that doesn't mean you don't need molybdenum either, right? So not to cut you off on that, but um, this is a really big topic. And if folks want to talk to you directly about some of this, um, your email address is jpv at liquid-grow.com. The other thing I want to say before, I know before you, need before to you, back cut, to before you cut me off, is that you can't just automatically know from a tissue test either if those things are deficient, right? Because when it's dry, roots aren't taking up nutrients that effectively. When it's super wet, the soils are saturated, saturated, the roots need oxygen, they're not taking up nutrients. What about super hot conditions as well? All those conditions that affect nutrient uptake could sway tissue tests. How long did those tissue samples sit in the fridge before they send? Yes, off? so I'm not saying that soil testing or tissue testing for, my, for micronutrients is a complete waste of time. You just need to understand that you need to interpret those with a grain of salt. And it might take more than a few observations to know if that tissue test is really gonna be predictive of, of getting a yield increase from applying that specific micronutrient. So it's a deep conversation and really the best way to know is to try it. That's what I do for a living. If you wanna know if you need a foliar micronutrient package, try it. But in my experience, it isn't all that consistent. That doesn't mean it won't be consistent on your farm. But when I rank a foliar micronutrient package, it's down here on my ranking of, of importantness. But timely planting, good fertility, premium seed treatments that include a levo for soybean, 
um, quality genetics, those things, foliar fungicides and insecticides for soybean, those things are all up here. The biologicals and the micronutrient packages and all those things you should be trying, but aren't things that, generally speaking, I see consistent yields from. Now, we talked about micro AZ. I have seen consistent yields from that. But as a general comment, those are things that may be important, but I think it's going to take some on-farm testing on your own to really understand if they're profitable for you. So to wrap it up, you're saying use your zinc with your sulfur on corn, manganese on beans. Yep, and boron can also be important for corn. Not nearly as consistent as zinc, but I have seen yield increases from boron on corn. Well, thanks for being here with us today, Jake. And for all of you out there at home, we hope you have a very Merry Christmas, and we will see you next week. Stay in the know with Liquor Grow.